Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to cover today from a big earthquake, big weather, and the top science news. We're starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com and finding a quiet last 24 hours. The throes of sunspot minimum in the 11-year cycle are in full swing. We've got a disk without serious active regions, no solar flares or eruptions. In the solar wind, we can see that the stream is beginning to fade out, never got any more geomagnetic instability than what we've already seen. And in response to questions from the community asking why that was the case, I wanted to quickly comment on the blip on Dr. Phillips' page regarding the solar wind. It's the article name, I believe, was causing the confusion you've communicated as actually this was a magnetic match between Earth's field and the solar wind, which causes deflection and repulsion of the incoming energy, whereas if it were flipped, the energy could couple directly into the system. Most of you did get the right idea, it was just that article name that tripped you up. Good call by Dr. Phillips on the science. Quick note on the corona holes, we see new ones incoming from the left. Have about two more days till these face Earth and about two to three more for their solar wind. Looking at the lithosphere, we had a 7.1 strike at the low velocity zone of the mantle down at the South Sandwich Islands in the South Atlantic. Pretty big rumble, but luckily no damage or destruction. China Desert here. No, seriously, it's under there somewhere. They are sending someone to double check when the record cold moves out of the region. It's allegedly going to happen later this week. Top hail of the day hit Goldfields, Australia and neighboring towns, up to tennis ball size there. Of course, the totals are still coming in as the United States digs out of a historic snowstorm. So many records for cold and snow have fallen and it's not even officially winter in the north. Someone forgot to tell the polar vortex and the jet stream. By far the biggest science story in the media the last day is the entry of Voyager 2 into interstellar space. And we actually got word of this a few weeks ago, but the official release is here and the data is pretty much what you would hope for. Spike in cosmic rays, a dropout of solar wind particles. Now while this is the signifying mark of the exodus of the craft from our solar system and into intergalactic waters, no rules out there, some of the most interesting data to watch will be the electric currents, which have been measured the whole way as well. Critical to note the baseline electric current of the initial region of interstellar space took more than 40 years to get there. One of the key plasma devices on Voyager 1 failed in the 80s, so while it crossed out of the system six years ago, this really is what we've been waiting for. Our first glimpse at the interstellar medium in situ. Interesting article out of the ESA on moon booms, the flashes of asteroid impacts, they actually say happens quite often, and they have in fact mapped a number of their observed impacts. Quick reminder, all these news stories are linked below the video. That includes the increased snowfall beneath the ozone hole, something they say is set to mitigate the ice loss potential in the region. In creating quark gluon plasma in the lab, interesting shapes were able to be formed and sustained. You might recall that the creation of that perfect fluid with proton collisions in the LHC was thought to be impossible at one point. We've got other big news from OSIRIS-REx at asteroid Bennu. They've mapped the entire rock and detected water. Since it is expected to be primordial for the system, it is indeed big news, but is it the most astrobiology friendly article of the day? Or does that go to Swiri at Ceres where widespread organics have been found? Amazing article there, but no, it too falls short. The top spot in astrobiology of the day actually comes from Earth, but it has implications for other planets, including my personal favorites out in Trappist. There's about 300 times more carbon mass in ground microbes than in the entire human species. They can live at insanely extreme conditions, and given that they found microbes under Antarctic ice, eating nuclear waste at volcanic vents and on the outside of the ISS, the genuine fact that today's discovery dwarfs them all is indeed the most telling of the radiation-shielded regions deep below other potential worlds. We are probably going to find life hidden below the surface. Last but not least, always good to find encouraging signs like this, and the reason is eloquently laid out on page one of the article. While mass and spin have been highly sought observations and data, the electric charge of active galactic nuclei has largely been neglected. Long way to go as they are stuck now explaining the 12 orders of magnitude difference between the observed charge just outside the nucleus and their theoretical limits of the nucleus charge itself, but they'll get there. We've got your wind maps, followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.